Hello! In today's tech-driven modern world, there is probably only one constant that we all need and tap into daily, and that is the internet. There is a global telecommunications and internet services provider that has penetrated over 300 markets worldwide, including operations in 140 plus countries. This company is GTT Communications. Unbelievably, this stock is trading at under $2 per share after declining from its high of $60 a share back in 2018. I see a possibility of a 2x or 3x in the coming short term, but a 15x if some catalyst materialize. As American businesswoman Melody Hobson once said, the biggest risk of all is not taking one. But do be warned, this is an extreme risk play. You should only consider if you are prepared for your investment to go to zero. I am not a financial advisor, so please note this is all for entertainment only. No more plugging. Let's start drilling. Take GCT Communications. That's a broadband provider with a twist. GCT gives its clients dedicated private lines, allowing businesses to connect directly to their data centers without going through the public internet, which is slower, far less secure. If you're embracing the cloud, maybe you need a private network. GCT is one of the few companies with a scale, I mean huge scale now, to provide truly global service. Before we drill into my bullish thesis and why I believe GTT to be a possible extreme all or nothing high risk high reward play. Let's first look at the risks and status of the company. On the 8th of May 2020, the company released its first quarter 2020 results. This is the last time GTT have reported earnings. Why is that? The reported revenues in the first quarter of 2020 were close to $400 million, which increased slightly from the fourth quarter of 2019, but decreased 4.4% year over year. They recorded an $83.3 million loss on the first quarter compared to a $19.1 million loss in the fourth quarter of 2019 and a $27 million loss in the first quarter of 2019. Yet the strange part is, based on their previous earnings, their cash flows from operations have been net positive and has been growing since 2015. GTT reported a $107 million positive cash flow for 2019. Earnings per share was reported to be minus $1.40 cents, which was only at minus 49 cents in the same period a year ago. Almost certainly, the single largest issue is the company has over $3.2 billion in debt. Something's not quite adding up here. Throw me a freaking bone here! 18 days after the release of the quarter one 2020 earnings, GTT announces that CEO Richard Calder would depart the company in literally a week after the release. On June the 5th, 2019, the now famed Wolfpack Research Group released a damning report on GTT and declared their short position on the stock. Wolfpack believed that GTT is an over-levered, fundamentally broken business that uses non-GAAP metrics to conceal its lack of organic growth. Since that report, Wolfpack Research has gone on to release similar reports on eHang and more recently, Skills. So what's happened here is they're incentivizing acquisitions, mm -hmm. revenue, top line, but not actual real fat cash flow, not actual real EBITDA. And right now they're not throwing off enough cash flow to pay down a huge debt. They went from 700 million in debt two years ago to 3.2 billion. In debt. There have been rumors that GTT have initiated formal talks on a restructured bankruptcy plan, a Chapter 11 filing. This usually means the court will help to restructure a business's debt and obligations. In most cases, the firm remains open and operating. In fact, many large businesses have gone through such a route, which include General Motors, United Airlines, Kmart, and thousands of other corporations of all scales. Fast forward to 16th of March 2021. GTT lodged a notification of late filing with the SEC. The filing simply states they couldn't submit in time the second and third quarter earnings for 2020. What is more important is a disclosure of previous accounting issues that concluded that the previous annual financial statements for 2019, 2018 and 2017, each of the quarters during the years 2019 and 2018, and the first quarter of the 2020 results together with certain related 
related disclosures among these should no longer be relied upon. Huh? This means all earnings data released by GTT since 2017 to now will be reviewed and re-provided. They do not anticipate being able to file these on or before March 31st, 2021. Until these filings are made, it is difficult to judge with accuracy what elements of the financial statements we can take to be the truth. With such disclosed inaccuracies of major financial reporting requirements as required by a listed company, it is not surprising that there are several class action lawsuits already being filed against GTT. It may be difficult to comprehend a bullish case for GTT considering all the issues with its financials reporting and large debt position. Let's start with the potential sale of its infrastructure division to Squared Capital for a reported $2.15 billion agreement, which in their words will reduce their capital expenditure and enable them to focus on their cloud networking business. These funds would likely go to pay back some of the $3.2 billion debt they have on books. January 13, 2021, Amaji, a global SaaS leader in broadcast and streaming TV technology, has selected GTT's network to deliver its cloud-managed broadcast services to clients in Europe and the US. February 17, 2021, Performive, a leading managed multi-cloud provider serving the mid-market, has selected GTT DDoS mitigation services to enhance the security capabilities of its network. March 10th, 2021, Charter Schools USA has selected GTT to upgrade its network infrastructure with software-defined wide area networking SD-WAN technology to more flexibly and securely meet the in-class and remote learning needs of its students, teachers, and administrative staff. All these contracts suggest to me that their business is still bringing in new customers, which provides recurring revenues moving forwards. Now here's where my real bullish thesis begins. According to Fintel, the institutional ownership of GTT is at 70% and there are some big funds invested here, such as BlackRock and Vanguard, who have 4.9% and 3% ownerships respectively. With such negativity surrounding their earnings figures, the damning attack by Wolfpack Research and the rumors of bankruptcy, we should expect this stock to be shorted big and the price action would support this as we see the massive scale of the short volume in the first quarter of last year. According to Fintel, on the day of this recording, the short shares available is only at 40,000. That is incredibly low. And part of the reason why the short borrow fee rate is an enormous 14.55%. The short interest daily volume has been sitting above 20% and hitting as high as 35% recently. I think the shorts here are sensing blood. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and jump some of this. and are shorting the stock in full anticipation for bankruptcy. The recently released investor presentation shows a 47% CAGR for revenues, which for 2019 equates to $1.7 billion, and over 90% of this is noted as recurrent revenues. Putting the accuracy of the figures aside, and if we take them at face value, then it really does not make any sense for this stock to be trading at $2, based solely on Yahoo estimates my simple DCF model is showing an intrinsic value of $29, which is close to a 15x on current price. A discounted cash flow model for a stock like this with the situations and factors in play may not warrant too much waiting on any investment thesis. The large institutional ownership with the short percentage on current float means the actual float is very small. Hence, I think there is squeeze potential here. The whole scenario, when I think about it, is game stop esque as for me I like the stock. GameStop was on the verge of shutdown until they had an injection of capital and the shorts were basically shorting them to bankruptcy. This is what I am seeing in a similar way for GTT. Should they release updated earnings which are positive, plus they can seal the $2 billion sale of their infrastructure arm to pay back some debts and those factors alone could turn the company upside down in which I could honestly see a 15x potential run up to $30. If a squeeze happens, this could 
could be an epic play. To summarize, I've initiated a very small position in this stock, but I stress again, this is a very, very high risk, high reward play. I tried to keep this short as there were some things I just couldn't get into. But as legendary investor Peter Lynch once said, behind every stock is a company. Find out what it's doing. Thank you for watching. Please take my analysis with precaution. Do your own due diligence and speak to a professional before you look to invest any of your money. If you are interested in double EPG stocks that I have in my freedom portfolio, please check out my other videos. For more huge growth stock picks, analysis and updates, please stay tuned and consider, go on, just consider subscribing to my channel so you get the information first. I am The Simple Trader. I try to keep this simple and we'll simply see you next time.